web exclusive or retail Big Bad Toy Store has all of the Ultraman figures you could ask for at the link in the description down below. Kaiju, Dragon Ball, Pokemon, and more. It's Steven's Toy Reviews. Hello there, collectors. Steven here, and welcome back to another SH Figure Arts Ultraman review, where today I will be taking a look at the Ultraman X and Gamora armor set. That's right, we get a two-in-one release here, and fortunately, the future is looking bright because the SH Figure Arts Ultraman releases just keep on coming that we might get some more accessory sets. But here's the problem. The first release has to be really good. Is it? Well, let's take a look to see whether or not X is worth adding into your collection. And no, I don't mean your former significant other. When you're taking an overall look at X, he doesn't really look all that bad. He has a pretty interesting digitized scheme to him in terms of design. He has some hidden paint apps here and there, like some blue around where the ears would be, essentially his earmuffs. But when you take a closer look, you can definitely see that there are quite a few flaws with X. And that's a shame, because I don't really want to give a lukewarm quality control review section here. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a... Uh, that's a bit unfortunate because I've been kind of lax on the uh, Ultraman reviews lately, but I can definitely say overall Bandai did a relatively solid job, but they did lack in the quality control department. So I'm going to stop sort of alleviating that blow for you, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you up close and personal. You see, you don't really notice anything too much on the head, the main focal area, which is good. Bandai really succeeded there where they failed with, let's say, the Monster Arts Gamera 1999. But when you explore the rest of the figure, such as some parts on the arm where there is some silver paint slop, or you notice down on the legs where there's some paint chipping already, or even some marks in the sculpt from where the articulation, unfortunately, uh, collides into the, the body, you, you really start to think... Um, Maybe Bandai could have put in a little bit more effort into this guy. Mostly throughout X, what you're going to be finding would be stray paint spray markings, little extra gray here, silver here, red there, that really shouldn't have belonged. Now, I know what some of you are probably saying, Steven, it's about a five and a half inch tall action figure, does it really matter that much? And to be honest with you, when it's sitting on the shelf, no, it really isn't going to be bothering many folks, but... Um, Got to be honest, when you're handling it, you know, when you're moving it around, you're going to notice that, oh, there's a little extra gray here. There's a little bit of silver on the bicep that shouldn't be there. Um, there's a random blue or gold drip of paint somewhere. Some random silver on the inner thigh? What's going on? Yeah, Bandai really should have stepped up the quality control game on this guy. But um, overall, interesting design. And aside from a couple of random stray marks, which you may or may not have, he actually does look pretty good. Moving right along to articulation, X unfortunately does not necessarily bring anything remarkable to the table. That is twofold. You see, because that means, well, the articulation is pretty solid, but at the same time, any previous existing issues you may have with the SH Figure Arts Ultraman Engineering, I'd say Ultraman as in general, uh, you might find it here as well. Well, what do we have? X is actually slightly unique in the articulation for the head area. Why is that? Well, as you see here, kids, we do have one peg that is on a hinge here, okay? That moves forward and back. The neck is on a ball joint seemingly as well, but realistically speaking, you're only going to get forward and back movement out of that. What this means is that the majority of the movement for X's head is going to be on a swivel left and right, and then that hinge up and down. So it's not true ball joint movement, but uh, effectively, we get some pretty decent range out of that. It's almost like you don't need a ball joint at all to get that kind of range of movement, as long as it's done correctly. <clears throat> okay, anyway, so, yeah, pretty good movement there, and it perfectly dodges the fin overall, which uh, that'll come off later. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the fin. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what else do we have? Well, we do have the shoulder pads, which are actually on kind of hinges here as they move around here, forward and back, in and out, if you will, which is nice. They do also pop off, which you will see a bit more of that later. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how that's done here. See, there's a hinge there. There is a ball joint there, but um, that's more so just for... Uh, creation's sake, you're not really going to get any ball joint movement out of the uh, shoulder pads. It's just there so this way they can pop on. Now, we do have the shoulders which are plugged into the body on a ball joint, okay? So they can spin around, okay? Very nice and good. Very good. Now, this is interesting here. We'll take 
his breastplate off. Now let's zoom in for a bit, okay? Because this is actually kind of important and some folks may overlook this. Now obviously, he has a butterfly joint, okay? Butterfly hinge to move forward. Now something in the instructions, it points to the shoulders, right? It actually has them highlighted or darkened. And then it makes mention that you can remove this plate. The reasoning for that is not telling you you can remove the plate, but let me go ahead and remove one of these just so this way I'm being extra careful here. Watch this. His shoulder joints pop out where they're plugged into the body. So you get a little extra range of movement there. Do be careful doing this because you're going to be pulling on a whole bunch of joints and you don't want to break anything. But yeah, that uh, whole shoulder system is plugged into a sculpt, which plugs further into the body or farther technically. And then you get even more range of movement there. So let's go ahead and just plug this back on, which is good to see there that you uh, can actually get a nicer range of movement out of X's shoulders than you would have initially believed. Now, the reasoning for that I do believe so myself. Uh, those of you who are eagle-eyed will be able to see that, unfortunately, when we go to utilize that butterfly hinge, this portion of the chest sculpt, uh, it is kind of spiky, and he, he can't really cross his arms over. When you pop that shoulder joint out, this helps to alleviate that a bit, and you get a little bit more range of movement there. So that's great. We do have a bicep swivel, which I do suggest utilizing this piece of the sculpt to cover up where the shoulder pad pops on and off. So this way you don't accidentally send that piece flying across the room. We do have double elbow hinges, which... Also, believe it or not, has a little bit of a swivel. Not so much so compared to older SH Figure Arts Ultraman figures, but that's okay. The SH Figure Arts wrist style joint does return here. So we do have the hinge one way, and then we do have the hand which plugs in on a ball joint, and then there's also a swivel at the base. So this way you can spin the hand around in all sorts of different directions at the wrist. For the ab crunch, it works just as expected. Do keep in mind the sculpt on X though. You don't want to scratch up anything, so do be prepared for that. And then we do have the waist joint, which is a ball joint as well. Uh, twisting and turning from side to side really doesn't work. You're going to have to rely on the ab crunch there. Do take note, I already have a bit of paint scuff over here. Now, when it comes to the hips, those of you familiar with SH Figure Arts renewal style hip joints, 2.0 anyway, uh, you might notice some similarities to some of your other figures, Some uh, something that might be a bit frustrating. But anyway, we do have two swivels which allow you to swing the legs forward and out. X can swing his legs back about that far, forward about that far, and neutrally out about that far. The reason why neutrally out about that far is because the thigh has this nice little uh, lip here, which unfortunately collides into the pelvis. So you are going to have to fudge it a little bit, turn it from side to side, or just force it underneath, which I would not necessarily recommend doing because you may have paint scrape or sculpt damage. Yeah, you don't want. Which, uh, by the way, there is a swivel where the hip plugs into the thigh. We do have the double hinge knee joint. Uh, they were kind of stuck on mine. They were hard to move at first, but once I got them going, they were easy to move. We do have the classic SH Figure Arts ankle rockers here. So that way you do have a hinge that allows the foot to move forward and back. And then we do have a swivel, which is from side to side. Then we have the ever important toe hinge. So overall, X's articulation is pretty solid. You're going to get some nice poses out of this guy. But uh, do keep in mind, you may have to be a little creative to overcome some minor obstacles, which it wasn't really expressed in this uh recording but um, these shoulder pads do like to fly off after you pop them off the first couple of times to swap out for the armor so do expect that on occasion those of you who had the ultra at ginga you know exactly what i'm talking about accessories time here and unfortunately x doesn't really come with any effect parts but he does come with the gamora armor set as uh, indicated in the title of this release but technically it is the cyber gamora armor set we're not gonna mince hairs here or whatever we're just gonna go ahead and take a look at everything that he has so for the hands he comes with two extra sets of hands he does come with the red color timer and obviously the gamora armor set now something that some folks are a little bit upset about or kind of concerned over is that the two sets of hands that he comes with um well they're very 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 similar so much so that they're both chopping hands the only main difference between the two 
is that uh, one has its thumb tucked in while the other kind of doesn't. Yeah, so one I kind of think of the karate bug man hands, and the other one is, pardon the pronunciation, the Zanadium Ray hand. So this way, if you wanted him to cross his arms over his chest and fire off a beam that um, he doesn't come with, he can definitely do that. Next up, we do have the red color timer, as I made mention before. So this way, if you want to display X like he's running out of time or is super weak, you can definitely do that. Why you would want to display a weak ultra, I don't know, but if you wanted to do that, you can. Just keep in mind you need to be careful here because there are two small pegs that you may break in the changing process. What I would recommend doing, as I've shown you here, pop off the breastplate, use something small to pop the color timer out of the hole, and then just plug in the preferred one as you please. All right, now it's time to go about getting X his armor equipped and... The way that this is going to work is I'm totally not going to reference the uh, instructions off to the side here, which, uh, you know, are going to kind of make an appearance just right there. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to do everything while at the same time just kind of chatting with you. Uh, so overall, the Gamora armor is pretty nice. I think it looks cool, but uh, it can be a little troublesome for folks who are looking to put everything together. So you got to pop out the color timer like that. Again, make sure you're careful and you don't break off any of the pegs. And you can just go ahead and pop that back on. So we're just getting X set up here. You want to take off that. Then we do have the shoulder pads, which are, again, easy-ish to remove. Um, something to keep in mind for the shoulder pads, they are actually numbered. I believe it is one and two. Nope, they're both two, so I was mistaken. But the easiest way to remember um, which uh, shoulder pad goes on which arm, the gray band is below the orb. So this way you don't get that mixed up too much all right so now we've pretty much removed everything except the hands which to swap them out all you got to do is just pull them off and then pop the other hand that you want back on so first thing is first as it is recommended we uh just go ahead and what i like doing is um not attaching the front part actually it's like what i like doing is attaching the back part first because it just plugs in nice and easy and do 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 Once you do that, you have a guide point for these little tubes, which plug into the bottom of the chest plate. All right, so this can be a little bit frustrating the first couple of times you do it because this is effectively replacing the color timer, and you just got to make sure that you line everything up and you pop it in correctly. And then once you do, these just kind of snap on. Um, these tubes, they're made of a very very soft plastic it's it's essentially vinyl so do be careful there now when you have the shoulder pads do keep in mind that the horn actually goes to the back so you just gotta fight it and this is the difficult part with the arm because unfortunately the sculpt will uh, fight you on it and then once you kind of figure out your own best way to do it, it's not going to be easy to do just because of the way things can be finicky with this figure and the shoulder pads. But there you go. It looks nice. Now we have the gauntlets for X, which you just move them out like so. Then you just, just be careful. You plug in the ball joint on the wrist in the hole there and then you just close it up and we're almost done and bada bing bada boom skis we are all ready to go um Yep, we are still good. So there you go. There is X all decked out. Let's take a closer look at the armor. And as you can see, for the most part, the armor, in terms of paint application, it actually looks pretty good. There's nothing super out of the ordinary here. Unfortunately, on the chest, there's a little, little tiny speck up by his collarbone, but that really isn't that big of a deal. The Gamora armor set looks really, really cool. Big fan of the metallic blue used, and the only finicky part is just that. Some of the snaps and whatnot may not fit correctly the first couple of times you use it, but that's okay. It's just a matter of getting used to it, 
and then you'll be able to swap out parts in no time. Just be careful. Now we do have a little bit of a proportion change to X. So how does the articulation change thanks to the armor? Well, um, this is about how far the head can look left and right, up and down. So it does limit the range just a smidge, not overly too much. For the uh, wrists, well, now you have these big old gauntlets on there. So yeah, you're not going to be able to spin them around as much if you want to dodge the uh, shoulder area at least safely. So you're going to have to be careful of that. Um, do they hold on relatively well enough? Yep, just like they would extra hands, not a big deal. Where the big hindrance comes in, because, well, to be honest with you, it's not at the ab crunch, it's in the shoulders. Yeah, that's about as far up as uh, X can raise his arms. Full rotation, that's retained. Almost. Yep, no, nope, it's all there. So yeah, raising and lowering X's arms, yeah, not really the greatest. You can use the swivel just fine. It's just mostly in raising and lowering the arms. Even if you were to push out the uh, shoulder pads like that, push them all the way up, yeah, they're still going to block the range of movement just a bit. Oh well. Now, for 75 bucks, I do think that this is a pretty solid overall package, but what is a bit disappointing is that since this is the base release of X, albeit probably what most folks know him for, unfortunately, there are no beam effects. So, again, there's no ray. There is unfortunately no beam for the Gamora armor set, but thankfully you can actually compensate for that with some pretty accurate effect parts that are already on the market. So you know the video you should check out if you want to see that. Now we're going to round out the review with a nice size comparison with some other figures you might have, and this is going to be very, very ultra heavy. So if you have a specific idea in mind for X to fight a kaiju or maybe team up with another ultra in your collection, this size comparison should do you justice. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Overall, I think for 75 bucks, X is a little steep in the asking price. In terms of quality control, Bandai definitely could have tightened up things in terms of paint application and making sure that the paint was better sealed. But when it comes to articulation, X does have just the right amount of engineering, so this way you can put him in a ton of fun poses. In terms of accessories, it is nice to see that he comes with one complete armor set. It is sad that he doesn't come with any effect parts, but... With all of the swappable parts, this is a very strong indicator. More effect and accessory sets will be coming down the line unless they decide to pull an Ultra Act Ultraman Ginga. Overall, I could definitely recommend X to fans of the character and the series and those who want to be completionists, but those who are just kind of casual collectors of Ultra stuff and they're kind of on the fence about whether or not they want to get this, wait for it to go on sale before you even think about making the purchase. Pretty solid figure, but 75 is a bit much. Well, folks, that's the end of this review. Thanks for watching, and be sure to follow me on social media to catch more behind-the-scenes shenanigans and updates. The end card should be popping up now with more hand-selected STR goodness for you to watch, so check out some of those videos. Be sure to check the description, too, to see where you can buy this figure or others like it and some cool links, like the credits for this video and other ways you can help out the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.